inflammatory bowel disease, genetics, and innate and adaptive immunity. When you have inflammatory bowel disease, is it only in your genes? Is it your destiny up front? <clears throat> That's uh, the key question I get asked by patients who have young children uh, or who have brothers and sisters who are healthy. The genetic predisposition or the fact that you may have a certain gene that puts you at an increased risk for inflammatory bowel disease doesn't guarantee you'll get an inflammatory bowel disease. In fact, for most of the genes, if not all of the genes, it's a very low risk, but it's more than the general population, which is why we've identified these genes. But from the perspective of the healthy brother or sister or healthy child, um, the risk is still, it's measurable, but it's not 100%. So there may be ways to prevent it. Okay. Which ways? Can you eat certain food? Can you avoid certain food? What can you do? So in the world of inflammatory bowel disease, that probably is the $100 million question right now. And the answer is we don't know. We are beginning to explore what is in the environment, in the air, in the food we eat. Um, that may be that additional trigger. So if you have the genetic predisposition, maybe there's something about the types of food that may be what's required to actually develop disease. Now, that can occur, that can work through many different ways, but identifying what that is, is not easy. Because there are so many roads that probably lead you to developing disease. But uh, you work a lot with experimental animals. In animals, can you modify the immune system as such that inflammatory bowel disease does not develop or develops? Can you do that already? Yes, we can do that in several ways. So one very simple way is that if you take a mouse that has a genetic predisposition, you've uh, knocked out the IL-10 cytokine, one of the genes. That mouse will develop colitis, but if you raise that mouse where there are no bacteria, what's called a germ-free situation, that mouse will not develop, will, will not develop quote, inflammatory bowel disease. So that's a simple example. So clearly there's something in the normal bacteria of the intestine that is required to trigger disease. Then after that, there are ways to manipulate or change the immune response that you can use to try and prevent disease, and that's been done many times in many different ways. A lot of the studies have looked at changing the immune response with immune active molecules, um, things that alter the innate and adaptive immune response. And there are now studies that are coming out showing that if you can alter the bacteria, sometimes there are bacteria that will push the immune response down a road of inflammation or push the immune response down a road of protecting against inflammation. There are studies now identifying what those bacteria are. One last question, is it perhaps possible in the future to give this bacteria orally? Um, that's already occurring in a very crude way because we are already exploring uh, ways to transplant or uh, re-change the bacteria in the gut. The problem is we're not sure which ones we really need, which ones may be good, or which ones may be bad to do in that circumstance. But that's very much the direction of a lot of research right now. So the summary is it's not, it's not in our genes. We can do something, we can escape, and there are future ways, maybe through giving the right bacteria, to even protect ourselves. Yes and diet and uh, uh, perhaps other things that may manipulate the immune system to, uh, to respond to that diet are going to be the ways of the future perhaps. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.